The Apostle Paul is on his way from Greece to Jerusalem to deliver an offering that he's been collecting. You see, Paul's preaching to Gentiles was controversial in the early church, and so he entered into an agreement with the original disciples. And part of that agreement was that the Gentile churches would remember and care for the poor Jewish Christians back in Judea. And so Paul spent a good deal of time fundraising on his last missionary journey. More than one of the letters of Paul that we have in the New Testament are, in fact, fundraising letters. So Paul's returning to Jerusalem to deliver the offering, and he's bringing a contingent of Gentile Christians from Europe with him, and they're going to stop in Corinth along the way. And so Paul's writing to the Corinthians to encourage them to make a good showing. Uh, good showing of hospitality and welcome to the delegation when they arrive, and a good showing and delivering the, and their bit of the offering to him to take on to Jerusalem. And so that's the context for our scripture lesson today. Hear now the word of the Lord. The point is this. The one who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and the one who sows bountifully will reap bountifully. Each of you must give as you have made up your mind, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to provide you with every blessing and abundance, so that by always having enough of everything, you may share abundantly in every good work. As it is written, God scatters abroad, God gives to the poor, God's righteousness endures forever. The one who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way for your great generosity, which will produce thanksgiving to God through us. For the rendering of this ministry not only supplies the needs of the saints, but also overflows with many thanksgivings to God. Through the testing of this ministry, you glorify God by your obedience to the confession of the gospel of Christ and by the generosity of your sharing with them and with all others, while they long for you and pray for you because of the surpassing grace of God that has been given to you. Thanks be to God for this indescribable gift. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us, thanks be to God. So let's begin today with a little stress reduction, okay? Uh, this week is Thanksgiving, and though Katie's already done it, it's typical for you to be asked what you are thankful for. So I should take a moment, think about that. And then I want you to turn to somebody near you and share with them what is it that you are thankful for this particular year. Go ahead. Well, according to scientific studies, your cortisol levels may have just been reduced by 23%, which means you're less stressed than you were a few moments ago. Scientific research into gratitude is rather clear at this point. According to positive psychologist Derek Carpenter, the benefits of practicing gratitude are nearly endless. People who regularly practice gratitude by taking time to notice and reflect upon the things they're thankful for, experience more positive emotions, feel more alive, sleep better, express more compassion and kindness, and even have stronger immune systems. Gratitude can improve our most intimate relationships, give us more disciplined self-control, increase our mental and physical health, make us more optimistic, make us happier. Studies even demonstrate how individuals practicing gratitude improve society, as gratitude is contagious. We all appreciate being thanked, and in the midst of the glow of that appreciation are more likely to then thank someone else. So it, it's catchy. Gratitude also has a cathartic function, helping us to overcome feelings of guilt. 
When we let people down, one way to heal the breach is to express gratitude to that person for something they've done for us. So broken social relationships can be mended and we can overcome our own personal negative feelings about ourselves. And what's maybe most exciting is that practicing gratitude is actually rather easy. Some of the virtues like courage or humility might be a little more difficult for us, but gratitude is one of the easiest to develop. Even simple practices like writing thank you notes or keeping a gratitude journal have been shown scientifically to have significantly lasting effects upon our attitude and our character. According to positive psychology, gratitude is ultimately more than being thankful, but is a deeper appreciation for someone or something which produces longer lasting positivity. Our thanksgiving then contributes to an overall emotional development within our character. We become people with a deeper appreciation for the world. So St. Paul encourages the Corinthians to be appreciative for the blessings of God that they have received. These aren't just material blessings, though he does include those, but also the spiritual blessings that they've received. Because, and the spiritual blessings are that they are a part of this new movement that is slowly changing the world, making it more just and peaceful and holy. And because of their gratitude, they should respond generously in hopes of passing along those blessings to other people. Their gifts will increase the blessings, making them more available to more people. Paul's fundraising appeal is for a vision of the world so grand it almost takes your breath away, writes Calvin Rotzel. For Paul imagines a new world with a new humanity united across old divisions that once separated people, yet now all working together as sisters and brothers in a common family, united in purpose, to achieve God's vision for the world. And Paul thinks, who wouldn't want to be a part of that? Who wouldn't want to be an initial investor in the making of a better world? Paul calls this opportunity to donate money an indescribable gift for which we could, should give thanks to God. So I was thinking of how we might update the language this is going to be bigger than if you were an initial investor in Berkshire Hathaway. Only this time, instead of your own personal financial return, you will be contributing to the making of a better world. Guess what? The church's financial appeal is still the same. 2,000 years later, we are still in the business of making a better world more just, more equitable, more peaceful, more joyful and loving. And so I thank you for your participation in God's ongoing mission and that small part of it that we play here, a part of that much bigger picture, the First Central Congregational Church. Happy Thanksgiving, and thanks be to God for you and your indescribable gift.